This video looks at why my Daypole Class 73 suddenly started behaving badly, slowing down and drawing a lot of current. Initially a suspect motor was thought to be the cause. You will see a full strip down on the model, examination of the PCB, motor and gear chain including strip down of one of the bogies. I'll then offer some opinions and advice. This video is suitable for intermediate service modelers. If you disassemble this model to this level, you could invalidate your warranty. Be aware the camera is not fixed and follows the gaze of my eyes in real time. Please don't complain about no tripod etc. With any job like this, take good close up photos as you go so you can check everything goes back in the correct place. Let's start our investigation. Please forgive me as I'm still struggling with my breathing. Hi everyone, right, the uh, ED is open and I have the current meter on it. I've disconnected the motor from the PCB and I'm feeding it directly. So whilst she's on the rolling road, there's no connections to the rolling road, I'm directly feeding the motor. This takes everything possible out of circuit from the board in case anything there is causing the sudden rise in current. Now at the moment she's drawing what I would expect which has been, to be honest, is a bit high for a light loco. She's on a rolling road so I suppose that could give a bit more stiffness to her. So I'm just going to let it run and see if we get the sudden increase in current. Oh, no. There we are, it's answered it for you. Yes, we will. It was only a quick blip up to 400 milliamps, but that's way too much. So either it's a problem with the motor, oh, sorry, or it's um, a mechanical obstruction in the gear tra train. So my next um, objective is to take the motor out, isolate the motor. See it it's going there again. So we'll isolate the motor completely, take it out of the loco, well maybe not take it out but we'll certainly disconnect the gear chain. Okay everyone, same as before but as you can see I've disconnected the drive chain so the motor is just independent. So let's ramp the power up. First of all, quite a lot less when it's not under load I mean how much load must that drive chain be putting on it so we need to look at that and it's uh, 80 milliamps now remember it was over 200 when it was running just itself but unfortunately I am seeing variation even now Could there be something stiff in the drive chain that has basically burnt this out or damaged the motor? Oh, it's down to 70 milliamps. Let's give it a little bit of light loading. I'm just going to brush my finger along one of the flywheels. I mean, look. How heavy? I'm really pushing. And we're not to 200 milliamps. Ah, so there's definitely something wrong with the drive chains, I would say. I have been putting undue strain on this poor motor and it suffered so let's find out which one so I've assembled the right side shaft and as you see it's gone up to 120 milliamps but there's there's no problem with turning I put a small screwdriver in and turned it through several revolutions 
there's no problem there there's no problem with the shaft there's plenty of movement so that's not bad so we'll put the other one in and see what we get both assembled and we're back to 200 milliamps it does kind of suggest there's a problem with solid doesn't it shouldn't be that much 100 milliamps just connect the gear tower so that side I'm fairly confident in this side needs further investigation the gear tower and bogey pivot mount simply unclips inside we can see the worm and large blobs of thick lube not doing any good at all you can easily lift the motor by inserting a flat blade screwdriver into the slots on the chassis note the pickup wires going to the bogey I'm going to remove them from the PCB to make things easier, but you can just about perform the next step and keep them in place. The wires go up onto the PCB on the same side as seen and connect to a location next to the other bogey's wires. Lever from the front of the bogey, then the rear, and finally unclip the two side clips. This is what you find inside. Lifting the wheel sets reveal the pickup wipers. Bend these up a little so that they are a firmer press on the bearing pickup. Carefully redistribute the existing grease and add the bell 102 to the gear mounts and worm bearings. Clear out any large lumps of grease. The wiring all tidied up. Well, I service the other bogey as well. But we're still at 220 milliamps, which seems an awful lot just for a drivetrain and a uh, low corner rolling road. So maybe the motor's just a bit weak and um, draws a lot of current under the slightest of loads because we've checked everything. All the cardian shafts have got plenty of m room for manoeuvre. The gear towers are free, uh, more so than they were, because there's no great blobs of thick grease, but they're now free. Uh, the gear chains in the bogies was fine anyway, but I I've eased it further. But there she is. That ramp the speed up a little bit. see if we'll get this sudden fluctuation well far from um, sudden current increases it actually dropped to 170 milliamps so perhaps the new lubricant and the redistributed original lubricant is um, doing some good we've also seen how we can overcome the problems with the pickups it's quite a nice little system really that they've got but you just need to bend those pickups up so that they press on the um, bearing axle bearing inserts oh, is it actually going to drop down to 106 yes it is so it's trying to drop down to 160 milliamps now which is much more reasonable it's not even running And dropping. Uh, perhaps I'll give her another running in period. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. Well, it looks like we might have caught this one just in time. My feeling about the motor is that it might be a bit weak, and while off-load draws a normal low current of less than 100 milliamp, 
On load, it soon ramps up almost three times as much. True, there was unnecessary drag in the mechanisms. Hope you found this of interest. I'll send it to Daypol and see if they give any opinions.